the bride preparing herself for the wedding to come. Sounds good, doesn't it? Today we start out with a beautiful image of the bride preparing herself for the wedding to come, spotless and blameless. And this is how we are to be, following the example of Yahshua the Messiah, the living word of Yahweh. Well, greetings, I'm David Brett, bringing you Revealing the Truth. Whether single or married, we should all be able to relate to the spiritual application of the marriage relationship. But today we'll be looking at the subject in general of making marriage work. Let's go to the beginning to start, Genesis 1, 26 through 27. And Elohim said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness, and let them rule over the fish in the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over the livestock, and over the earth, and over all the creeping creatures that creep on the earth. And Elohim created the man in his image. In the image of Elohim, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And we have been given the responsibility of managing creation, and we've been created to be able to procreate. And recently watching a documentary trying to put the universe into perspective for our finite minds, it's hard not to see that we are in a creation, and that we have been given the right to witness the birthing process of life itself. Regrettably, uh, each day there are murders uh, occurring uh, with abortions. Um, but continuing in Genesis 2, 23 through 25, it says, therefore man shall uh, leave his wife, uh, mother, a father and mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And they were both naked, and the man and his wife, and they were not ashamed. The one flesh statement here is clearly a Hebrew idiom phrase that uh, describes being married, a covenant relationship. Yahshua the Messiah confirms that it was Yahweh that had placed Adam and Eve together as one. Marriage can be a wonderful and beautiful union with physical intimacy, adding a dimension for expressing loving emotions, and procreation for the addition of children to the family. Some married couples are not able to have children uh, for reasons of accidents, wars, these type of things. Uh, but they're still able to have a functioning relationship, a meeting of minds, and becoming one in that sense. In some cases, they adopt children and have the traditional family. Uh, I might mention that that traditional family is a man and a woman with children. Um, the family union, union is actually, our unit is actually a foundational um, part of society. And if you take that foundation and break that down uh, you know, to where it doesn't function, you have a breakdown in society. The family really is a foundational building block of homes and communities. Do we really understand what Yahweh expects in a family union? Matthew 19, 4 through 6 says, haven't you read, he replied, that at the beginning of the Creator, or at the beginning, the Creator made them male and female, and said, for this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one. Therefore, what Elohim has joined together, let man not separate. A marriage is an ordained institution by Yahweh, hence one of the reasons he says that he hates divorce. The word also says in Hebrews 13 verse 4, marriage should be honored by all and the marriage bed kept pure for Elohim will judge the adulterer and all sexually immoral. There are difficulties which must be overcome in marriage and since Yahweh hates divorce, divorce should not be an option. And this should be in the mindset of both the man and the woman going into marriage. This doesn't mean that there aren't reasons for divorce as there are. 
there are also times in which it is appropriate to separate when no solution is immediately apparent. But the goal in such situations should be reconciliation through further communication and even counseling if needed. The vows one makes makes the marriage a solemn covenant, one in which the couple vow to stay together through it all until death do us part, as often is said between the uh, couple at a marriage ceremony. Speaking of going through it all, the first two years typically are the hardest in marriage. And that, um, you know, we, we do see difficulties in, in getting to know one another, getting used to one another. And it's difficult. I mean, when my wife and I were first counseling through uh, uh, thinking about uh, getting married and such, the minister who was counseling uh, us basically said that uh, we would have difficulties and that even before we got married, that once we got married, he would see us probably for counseling within a six-month period. And interestingly enough, uh, that occurred. So he was uh, correct and he had seen a number of, um, and had performed a number of marriages. So he was basically talking from experience. Uh, one of the things that helped us uh, was we were not unequally yoked. Uh, we were committed to our religious and therefore moral commitments before him. No doubt this is one reason why Paul, the Apostle Paul, admonishes members to marry within the body of Messiah only. And he does say only. Now besides being the same flesh, uh, well let me back up. Um, you know we We've already talked about this before in considering the bride of Messiah. Um, the clean is not to mix with the unclean. And so there's a whole process, even in our daily walk in Messiah with Yahweh um, as our, our, the ultimate head. We understand that we are not to partake in the evil deeds of society, not to go with the crowd so to speak, because the crowd is essentially going off the cliff, uh, ultimately. So, besides being of the same faith, one of the things we did to help uh, lessen the problems that might arise was to take a computerized compatibility analysis. And this helped us to talk about things like finances, children, um, career plans, job responsibilities at home, etc. Et Some of these things don't necessarily get talked about with a couple that are, you know, in love and, and those emotions are, you know, causing them to maybe not necessarily think uh, about all these things. But they do come up eventually. And so it's good to talk about these things before they arise so that you can, um, you know, work through them a little bit better than you would have if you had not talked about them early on. We also spent time in various social situations, uh, not just going to the movies and not just going out alone with each other, but with others in group settings. The very purpose of this is to see how the other interacts with others. Uh, this way you get to know the person, um, uh, you know, the person you are till death do you part. Uh, getting involved with. And a potential marriage partner will, uh, or I should say a potential marriage partner not willing to allow you to have other friends or wants to keep you away from family members or these type of things, uh, that can be a toxic relationship. And there are guides and help, self-help books uh, dealing with certain situations like extreme jealousy or controlling type of uh, relationship problems where um, um, you know, all that is uh, talked about. I don't want to get into all that today, but besides all of this, there are helps out there, both in writing and in videos and CDs and such, various subjects on marriage, uh, and those thinking about uh, being married. Now, while we don't get into the, the toxic, well, we won't be getting into the toxic self-help guides today, there are some guides out there that are helpful. Um, the love bank idea, for example, it's, which has been brought out in, in some uh, seminars and, and um, you know, different presentations. Everything you do or say um, either d makes deposits or makes withdrawals. 
you know, honey that makes that that dress makes you look fat. Okay, is that a is that a positive or a negative? Is that a deposit or a withdrawal? Uh, honey, you know that you're my best friend and the love of my life. It's a deposit, is it not? Uh, you know, catching the door for the other, sending flowers with a card, you know, going on dates, stuff that you did when you were dating, uh, is things that tend to wane after you're married, but they should be done, um, you know, after the marriage as well. Now, there are no perfect marriages, and with that said, the best we can do is make the marriage the best we can, and in doing so, we can enjoy the blessings thereof. Remember, there is always cause and effect. All marriages can grow and prosper. And that's the idea of the love bank, making deposits, keeping in mind that, you know, that there is cause and effect and what you do can either play a role in bringing the other partner up and the overall marriage uh, up or can tear it down. And that's important to know. You know, for my wife and I, one of the tools uh, that we uh, were actually given uh, was a book called His Needs, Her Needs. This helped us to understand even more in detail of what uh, the other person's needs are. Um, for example, we'll, we'll touch just a, on a couple different things and keeping in mind that men and women do think differently. A man is logical. Uh, men tend to want to respect, uh, want respect and also to be esteemed. Men like companionship and physical activities at times, and at other times, men want, men want to go into their figurative caves. Um, but there can be a problem. For example, if a woman wants to, a wife wants to talk to her husband after he gets home, but yet he's detached from the day's activities and just wants to go into his cave, he needs time to defrag, so to speak, or de-escalate from the day, uh, decompress, is another good word for that. And then he can come and talk to uh, the wife more readily in communication that she would need. And women are emotional and they feel, they, they think too, but differently in some situations and many times feelings are attached to the, the thoughts. When a woman expresses herself it's hard to for us men to understand sometimes because those thoughts are being expressed from feelings. And so this is where communication comes in and understanding how to communicate. Uh, there is a technique called mirroring in which a person will ask questions to make sure that the person is understanding what the other person is saying. And if, if that's not what they're saying, the other person can clarify what they are saying. And that's where communication is really important. Women want stability and security. Women like companionship too, but many times in a conversational way. These roles of which just a couple are mentioned here can be reversed as well, as well role reversal, but not typically. So as we consider these things, we want to think about what makes marriage work, but ultimately a marriage will work more if our focus is first and foremost to our Heavenly Father and making that relationship work. Making the work, the relationship work with our Heavenly Father through the Messiah. That is paramount and it should be paramount for the couple who are thinking about marriage and for those that are married. Who has ascended into heaven and descended? Who has gathered the wind in his fists? Who has wrapped the waters in his garment? Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name or his son's name, if thou canst tell? Hello, I'm Carrie Brett with Yahweh's Assembly in Yahshua. Learn more about the importance of the divine names of our Heavenly Father and His Son, as well as getting better insight of the scriptures that will help you to learn biblical truth. Request our free literature, Discovering the Name of Yahshua in the King James Bible, and the Hebrew Aramaic origin of the New Testament. To receive your free literature, visit us online at www www.yaiy.org. You can also write to YAIY 2963 County Road 233, Kingdom City, Missouri 65262, or call us toll free at 1 877 642 4101. 
You know, a waiter or waitress in a restaurant can typically tell when a couple is not married versus those who are married. And the, the giveaway is that the married couple don't really talk that much. So um, when we are thinking about marriage and going through the process, we talk a lot, we communicate a lot. Not necessarily about all the things that really should be talked about, and this gets into the idea of having counseling before marriage and talking about those things that really do come up in relationships long term. Uh, so that's a, that's a good thing. It's something that uh, we offer as a service through our assembly, and it's something that uh, I think other assemblies have recognized as important. Uh, when um, talking to couples that are thinking about marriage. Even those that are married, there are questionnaires that can be uh, gone through to give a facilitator a better idea of what really is going on for the couple and why they are needing counseling. Um, it's not always as evident as uh, one would like uh, so that those things can be talked about. But it's important to talk. It's important to communicate. There have been a number of studies. In fact, there, were, there was a study on 300 studies on relationships, and of those 300 studies, the thing that came out at the top, which the one study found out, was communication. That was key in making the relationships uh, work. And so if you have a couple and they're not talking, sometimes that can cause problems because the other might have the you know, some bad thoughts in mind that, you know, the other person isn't talking to them because they don't feel that they're attractive anymore. You know, things can set in. Uh, that's why it's important to be sincere, but also tell how you feel uh, to the other individual. Uh, positive always is, is a good thing, but it's also important to talk about negative feelings as well at times when appropriate. And there are books like The Language of Love that talk about how to communicate these deeper emotional issues that sometimes uh, we have uh, going on within our own hearts and minds. Let's go back into scripture uh, and talk about uh, some things here. 1 Corinthians 7, 5. Do not deprive one another except, except through agreement for a time to give yourselves to fasting and prayer. This is the idea of focusing on our Heavenly Father, focusing on Him through His righteous Son. Do not deprive one another except with an agreement for a time to give yourselves to fasting and prayer, and come together again so that Satan does not try you because of your lack of self-control. We all deal with this flesh. We all deal with different uh, things, but we are to draw close to our Heavenly Father, stay in communication with Him, through study of His Word, through prayer, through fasting, submitting to His Spirit rather than our own flesh. And it's important for couples to do this together, to make their relationship stronger by making the ultimate relationship stronger. Remember, we're going towards the coming kingdom. This life is but just a speck of time within the overall time that's yet ahead. In fact, the time that's coming outside of the physical realm, time doesn't exist. So we're looking at an internal uh, time ahead of, of us, if uh, you know, can explain it that way. I say eternal time, but you know, time doesn't exist in eternity. So um, that's just one of the things that Alfred Einstein uh, discovered through is e, equal, e equals mc square uh, type of uh, studies. Uh, time doesn't exist without matter. But coming together ultimately is not to be neglected, but there are definite times to focus on our prayer and study through fasting. And a healthy marriage in Messiah is one that focuses on Yahweh and each other. Ephesians 5, 25 through 30. Husbands, love your wives, just as Messiah also loved the assembly and gave him up for her. You know, the reason this is mentioned is because, well, for men, sometimes we, you know, we think, well, if we go to work, we're doing our job, we bring home the money, 
we support the wife, that, that should be enough. But really, ultimately, women have needs that we don't necessarily have ourselves, and we have to put forth the effort. So here in Ephesians 5, 25 through 30, it says, Husbands, love your wives. Make a conscious decision to do this, just as Messiah also loved the assembly and gave himself up for her, so that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word. Why do we need to continue in the word? It's a washing of the word that occurs within us. That he might present himself to the assembly in all of her glory, having no spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that we would be holy and blameless. We are to work on ourselves. We are to overcome this world. We are not to go along with the world in its ways, because that way leads to destruction. So husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He's, he who loves his own wife loves himself, for no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourished and cherishes it, just as Messiah also does the assembly, because we are members of his body. It's been said that love is a decision. It's a decision to respect and serve the one who you, whom you've made a vow to. And I think we who've made a vow to Yahweh through Yahshua and been baptized into Yahshua's name can relate to this certainly more in a spiritual way. We may not always feel close to Yahweh, but it doesn't mean we stop paying attention to what he tells us to do in his word. No, in fact, we must continue to respect and to serve him through his son, our master and savior, even if we don't understand why certain things have happened in our life, such as a traumatic event, which we think shouldn't have happened, but certain things do happen. We are tested, we are tried, we go through struggles. It's for a purpose of getting us ready for what is to come, because only good things, good character, and uh, the endurance that we build up, it's gonna help us get through other things in the future, but ultimately what goes into the kingdom is going to be good. And that is a process that we're working on now, and that the Father is working with us through the Son in His Spirit and through His Word, again, the washing of the Word. We must continue to serve in love, and love is a decision. It's not just a feeling. We choose to do what is right, no matter what the circumstance, whether or not anyone is looking. Uh, as a matter of fact, Yahweh knows and, you know, nothing escapes Yahweh's notice, so we can't hide anything from him. Ephesians 5, 22 through 24, Wives, be subject to your own husbands as to the master. Can we relate to this spiritually? Certainly. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Messiah is also the head of the assembly. And as we've noted before, in 1 Corinthians 11, Paul describes the head of Messiah is Yahweh. So there's an order. Uh, he himself being the savior of the body, speaking of the Messiah, as the assembly is subject to the Messiah, so also the wives ought to be hus to their husbands and everything. And there are reasons which we don't always understand for the things we're told to do. Just as we understand more than our children, Yahweh understands more than we do. That's why we should do what he says in his word, uh, whether or not we understand. Um, you know, for everything that uh, we might have questions of or for. One of the more profound chapters concerning wives in the Bible is Proverbs 31. Proverbs 31, 10 through 12 says, An excellent wife, who can find her? For her worth is far above jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not evil all the days of her life. And we're to do good for the kingdom and for our king, Yahshua, all the days of our life. Proverbs 31, 15 through 20, she rises also while it is still night and gives food to her household and portions to her maidens. She considers the fields and buys it. Her, from her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She girds herself with strength and makes her arms strong. She senses that her gain is good. Her lamp does not go out at night. She stretches out her hands to the distaff, and her hands grasp the spindle. She extends her hand to the poor, and she stretches out her hands to the needy. Now, there are spiritual applications and parallels to be drawn from all this. Uh, first, for example, her lamp does not go out at night. 
Well, there's plenty of oil, not like the other foolish ones who run out of oil. Speaking of the ten virgins. Um, another one, from her earnings, her increase, she plants a vineyard. Her tithes and offerings provide the seeds, the seeds of Yahweh's word, to be planted for the harvest. Another one here, she extends her hands to the poor, and she stretches out her hands to the needy. You know, we do this to a dying and sick world with the message of the coming kingdom and of his Messiah, of Yahweh's Messiah. Uh, also, she rises also while it is still night and gives food to her household and portions to her maidens. A possible allusion to the coming tribulation. Do you know that the saints will be involved with the tribulation in the sense of proclaiming the word? Uh, if we are alive during that time, we will certainly be helping to share why things are the way they are, why the tribulation is upon the earth at that time, because people are going to be looking around going, what is happening? The whole world will be dis in disarray for the very purpose of punishing the world for its evils and murderous ways, which we see uh, through abortions, through people hurting one another, through the uh, greed in, in society that we see, and a number of other things that are just of the devil, uh, quite frankly. But men and women have their respectful roles in the marriage relationship, just as the saints, the body of Messiah, has uh, their role with the Father in the Son, in the Spirit of, of Yahweh. And if, uh, you know, a couple uh, is there to serve one another, if they're able to have children, raise them in the ways of Yahweh, uh, to the glory and esteem for Him, set an example to the world of what it means to serve the Creator of the universe. To see the physical and spiritual application of marriage relationship is a key to living a long and joyful life in Messiah and with each other in marriage within the body of Messiah. In a marriage, a man and a woman can truly become one, thinking and acting more in sync together as the years pass. It's a beautiful thing to grow old together and witness this take place firsthand, as my wife and I have, having been happily married for 21 years. Well, I'll leave you with a parting scripture here. Revelation 19, 7 through 8. Let us rejoice and be glad and give the glory to him, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. It was given to her to clothe herself in fine linen, bright and clean, for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. If you're considering being married, or if you're already married, the best thing you can do is to work on that marriage and or proposed marriage and to focus on Yahweh in Messiah Yahshua because ultimately that is our first and foremost priority and everything else will be added after that.